part of us, uh, I was looking a lot at how we survive on and how we sort of surround ourselves with things that keep us within what we choose to live in, you know, so the pot, the tree, the, and also the symptoms of the regime, you know, the kind of twisted tree, the amount of coffee. This was actually one of the big factories in a, a big industrial area in the south of Poland, which was Russian occupied, Soviet occupied. So, it's a, it's a town where there was a lot of uh, terrible sort of mutations because of the bad industry that was there. So, so it was sort of the illness of the town in a way. And that's what I was kind of talking about. Uh, it's also made that it wasn't any digital work of any kind. So it was the work of going to a place and looking at that place very kind of calmly and then in a way kind of reporting back in a kind of collective way. It's also a lot about the things that aren't in the picture, so the top of the tree, the dead things kind of coming from the sides rather than being a focus centre with a kind of composition to it. It's all about what's not in the picture in a way, which is the whole of this kind of sick place. Um, the winters and this kind of thing where everything's blanked out except the things that kind of you can't blank them out because they're there. You know? Somehow you have to deal with the scale that it doesn't just assume something that you, you have to enter it and try to come to terms with it. It's not quite so easy. It's not an easy, beautiful, well-made picture. It's kind of more difficult than that. Um, so I suppose what I hope that the viewer is going to have is a kind of memory of the picture afterwards. So it's, it's not so much about hanging something uh, beautiful on your wall or leave the work, leave with a kind of impression maybe of the moment in time or a, a kind of uh, relationship between things in time and something that's maybe gone, in this case it's gone completely. So I've just been to um, South Africa where I've been photographing where Nelson Mandela was born. So it's a site and it's a pavilion which is kind of modern pavilion built in this place. And so the work in the end was kind of the journey to get there. You know, it's, it's, uh, it was as, as much as about the place, it was about the journey. So it's a sort of way kind of spiritual journey. Um, and the result of that work, now the prints are digital and they're on the same scale as this. And um, they have the same kind of absence in a way, the absence that you, the viewer, has to fill it in to imagine to be there, to have the possibility of doing the same journey or a moment of the same, not even the whole of the same journey, just a moment of the same journey. So this was 1996, and the Mandela's, I suppose, is also the moment before he dies, you know, the moment when he's still alive. So there's still a kind of memory of what happened, you know, which after is going to disappear, you know, then it's gone afterwards. So, uh, so they remain as a kind of funny kind of monuments, I suppose, anti-monument monuments. So. And how, how do you work? Um, I mean, does it take a long time to take a picture? Do you just wander in the city? Well, I spent a lot of time. When I went to Poland, I did a show in the museum and they sort of invited me back and I had an assistant, so I had some help. Because otherwise I wouldn't have found my way around. Though. So, and I suppose I went to the places that I thought were the most affected by Soviet occupation, but on the other hand, Soviet influence, but on the other hand, uh, uh, yeah, I do sort of wander around as well. But then, for instance, with the Mandela work, I, had, I, I made a specific journey to this one place, which it turned out was incredibly difficult to get there because of the danger of South Africa. And, it was, and then I travelled alone, so I was kind of very vulnerable. In this case, I made, I made about, I made a whole series of pictures called In the Course of Time. There was about 25 of them in the end that were made one huge show, so this is one of the pictures. So there was another one which was the road uh, going to Auschwitz, which was just a road. There was another one which was a gypsy camp outside of Warsaw, which is one I like a lot. Um, they're, usually, they're usually places that have a reason to be... To, they're also places that nobody else is going to photograph. You know, they're very anti-monument in the sense that nobody, even the Mandela monument, nobody's going to go there to photograph. It. You know, it was a statement made by a regime to try to justify something, but it's not really something that is a a real monument in the sense that people go there. Maybe in the end they will, but at the moment they don't. So, and this is sort of very apt and monumental, but the scale is monumental. So sort of try to be kind of intimate, intimate and absent at the same time. The scale, as you say, the scale is monumental. Yeah, but also the prints of this film, I was making them by hand, so they're very, uh, with sponges and with 
So the very um, so now I'm making them more digitally, but it's just, just as much work. In fact, it's more work. <laughs> but there are some, uh, you can see some little retouche. Uh, yeah, on, sometimes, on, on, sometimes pictures. something really bothers me, then I retouch yeah. it. You know, something that I can in the building. Um, yeah, sometimes where something just doesn't read, it's not correct, or something, then I retouch it. I don't otherwise, I try to leave it as the negative was, you know, because it's a record of going somewhere. It's not a perfect picture. Although now, because of the way pictures have gone, the new ones are kind of perfect pictures, they kind of have to be because there's no other way of making a picture anymore. I think it's quite difficult to make a very crude picture. So, but this time it was, just the scale of it was quite uh, against what pictures are supposed to be, you know, this kind of quite contained, picturesque, based on the kind of saw where you like it immediately, you know, this is not, you're not really supposed to like this, you're supposed to be affected by it, but not to like it. So it's sort of this handmade thing is part of it. So, actually, I think it's more important than ever now that we can make things. You know, because otherwise there's no resistance to a kind of technological uh, consumer world, you know, and then it's quite a strong statement to make something. You know, so that's, I suppose that's part of it, that you can actually make a photograph rather than a photograph just existing like thousands of other photographs. So that was sort of also part of it. You said you, you, you made a series. Yeah. And um, where are the other? There are about well, 25. The yeah, some and of them are were just they're around spread. the world. Yeah, yeah. Some, uh, well, some are in France, but a lot are in French museums. Um, I mean, it's not important that a few of them I would love them to be together. together. I would love them to be together. But then the way things get bought means that often yeah. one gets bought. Well, I, sometimes I would love, and it often doesn't happen, is that something from one period is joined to something of another period. The thing is, that I think is really good if you start to get a series of things that all join up. But uh, and, or maybe even uh, maybe ten years difference, you know. But they have a kind of relationship. But it often doesn't happen. You know, it does sometimes happen, but it's quite difficult for it to happen. So people have to keep collecting. The decisions about collecting change. So it's difficult that someone follows your work that much. It's more private collectors. I mean, private collectors can't really buy these works, so they're more for public collections. You know, so it is quite difficult that they're together. But these ones, there's, uh, there's probably some places like that too, I think. 